What is the rule of law? Like democracy or equality, the rule of law is a popular but vague term. It's kind of one of those terms that lawyers and politicians use so much, it's almost become meaningless. Kind of like when you use a swear word so often that you no longer find it offensive. Today, we're going to try and demystify this term so you can all bring it back into your vocabularies without sounding like boffins. So, what is the rule of law? For answers, we turn to the super reliable, go-to source that got even the best lawyers through law school. The internet. According to numerous reputable websites, the rule of law is the legal principle that law should govern a nation and its citizens, as opposed to the power resting with a few untouchable individuals, like politicians or royals. It comes with a bunch of concepts, like the law should be clear, known and enforced, the courts need to be independent to government and resolve disputes fairly. People are presumed innocent until proven otherwise by a court. Police can't arrest or detain you without good reason. Every citizen is equal under the law, whether they are a king or a lowly first year law clerk. This rule of law concept has a long history dating back thousands of years. The ancient Greeks established democratic law courts back in the 4th and 5th centuries BC with juries that could have hundreds of members. Sure, their punishments might have been a little different to modern day sentences, but the concept was there. In 1215, English leaders signed a document called the Magna Carta, which set in writing the rule that monarchs and politicians must answer to the same laws as their citizens. The catalyst for this agreement was the tyrannical rule of King John. Yeah, he's the greedy king in Robin Hood. He imposed ridiculous taxes on his people and he refused to follow the same rules himself. So the Magna Carta made everyone equal under the law, including King John, and it's still considered the first document in British and Australian legal history to lay out the rule of law on paper. Even though it was actually written on sheepskin at the time, I think it's fair to say the Magna Carta was the beginning point of our understanding of the rule of law. Up until that time we had kings and queens that ruled through the force of arms. In fact, they also argued that they ruled according to the God-given gifts of their right to rule. What Magna Carta was, was the first time an instrument was introduced, a document by which the monarchs agreed to subject themselves to the law, to recognise that people were entitled to a form of equality before the law, and also that they could have a right to a jury trial. And those were really momentous new concepts that uh, set us on a new understanding of the relationship between the monarchs and their subjects. A great analogy for seeing the rule of law at work in modern times happened earlier this year when Crown Prince Frederick of Denmark was visiting Queensland in August. Denmark's future king was left red-faced when he was denied entry into a Brisbane nightclub. Fred was turned away by bouncers at a nightclub because he didn't have ID. The bouncers treated him as equal before the law, just like any other Aussie on a Saturday night. That was until Freddie came back with some police, who backed the prince, and they convinced the bouncers to let him into the club, despite having no ID. Now, although everyone in the club was probably delighted to have a beer and a boogie with the Prince of Denmark, a royal was treated differently and was not required to follow the same rules as ordinary citizens. And this is what goes against notions of the rule of law. The rule of law is good only so far as it goes. Uh, countries such as Germany under the Nazis normally applied the law and uh, rigorously, but there were black holes. There were areas where the law didn't run or there were areas where the law was very oppressive and cruel and tyrannical. So you have to be careful that you don't reduce the rule of law to the rule to the law of rules. Uh, you've got to make sure that the law which you are applying is a law that respects fundamental human rights. So the rule of law tries to prevent people from seizing power in an arbitrary way like Hitler by keeping both rulers and citizens equal and accountable before the law. It's important to remember that equality under the law does not necessarily translate to economic or social equality. Few people are privileged enough to sleep in the same waterfront mansion as our Prime Minister, for example. 
But if Malcolm had a few too many schooners at the cricket and he was caught taking his Fiat 500 home for a joyride, he'd receive the same punishment as any of us driving our beaten up station wagons home drunk. Well, that's the principle anyway. Yeah.